We have a job to do on behalf of 1.3 million members. Our job is to make sure that we make the best choices, and we can't make choices without doing interviews and finding out exactly where people stand on labor issues. General President of the Teamsters, Sean O'Brien, held a um, held a, uh, a meeting, a private meeting, with uh, Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago um, in preparation for a roundtable to be held with Trump and other Teamster officers and rank-and-file workers. Um and you know it's uh it's kind of weird it's kind of weird it, you know it, it, for for one it, it, it's just kind of weird taking the meeting generally i think uh but then also allowing it to be used by trump for uh as a photo op you know trump and so trump uh, a couple of days ago put a picture of him and Sean O'Brien both doing a thumbs up on his Truth Social page, right? And so, like, okay, you know, having the meeting is one thing. I, I'm I'm fine to agree to disagree or or to find you know some uh, you know uh, to to uh, hold some tension there. But like, d- doing this next to Trump, like that's that's pretty fucking weird. Uh, 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 weird, and and so he got a lot of he got a lot of backlash. And actually, it was interesting. There was a Teamster that I follow on Twitter said that Teamster Twitter is really fucking pissed off, but Teamster Facebook is like really excited. I don't know how true that is. I am not on Teamster Facebook. I have a view into Teamster Twitter, um, but uh, and so I saw the the outrage about it. Um, but they put out a statement along with the uh, along with their photo. The Teamsters photo didn't have Sean O'Brien doing the thumbs up, but Trump's photo did. Uh, the Teamsters photo had Sean O'Brien doing this just bizarre uh, 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 pose with his hands. Uh, I don't. It was weird. His face looked weird. I don't know what what the deal was. If I I would have wanted that retaken. <laughs> if I was Sean O'Brien, he just looked weird. Um, but here's what they said in their press release. Teamsters General President Sean O'Brien met privately with President Donald Trump on Wednesday for an in-depth and productive discussion, I doubt it, on worker issues most important to the Teamsters Union. The former president committed to sit down with rank-and-file Teamsters General President O'Brien and General Secretary Treasurer Fred Zuckerman in January during another critical presidential round uh, roundtable with union members. The upcoming roundtable will be held in Washington, D.C. at the Teamsters International Headquarters. Uh, Quote, there are serious issues that need to be addressed to improve the lives of working people across the country. And the Teamsters Union is making sure our members voices are heard as we head into a critical election year. We thank the former president for taking time during this private meeting to listen to the Teamsters top priorities. And we are eager to bring together the rank and file for an important and necessary roundtable with President Trump this month. Additional details uh, will be announced as soon as the Teamsters rank and file presidential uh, roundtable meetings continue. And, uh, you know, so Can, and, and I also want to interject there to say yeah. that my understanding is that they have this open invitation to all the candidates. Yes. Right. Yes. They Cornell do. West, Marianne Williamson, Joe Biden, uh, you know, will, will will or can have the same opportunity for a meeting and a roundtable. Uh you know whether you agree or disagree with that approach that's its own conversation but right. uh i do think that's you know it's right. it, that's an important detail it's not like they you know singled out trump right, for this right. um, that's true uh, although although um they're doing round tables with all of the candidates i don't think that Sean O'Brien is doing private meetings okay. with all the candidates. So this is this thing that happened on Wednesday was different. Right. And, you know, again, you can debate. Do you want your president to meet with someone like Trump? And there's, I think, good reasons to be opposed and good reasons to be in favor of it, honestly. Um you know, so right. like I, I think there, you know, there's there's space for disagreement over that. Um, honestly, uh, I'm not right. sure that I feel super strongly one way or the other because I do think there are some good arguments on all sides of it. Um, you know, 
but here's some of the here's some of the criticisms from Twitter. Uh, one, personally, I don't think that a union official needs to meet with a fascist three days before the anniversary of their attempt to overthrow democratic governance. Um, you know, that's another thing fair, to think fair about. Enough. Uh, um, January sixth is today, and and it is kind of kind of strange to be uh, meeting with Trump in this time in particular. Uh, to anyone saying it's complicated, it's actually the simplest damn thing in the world, and your judgment is suspect if you don't see that. Fair enough. You know, if you want to say that, I I also see that if you are the Teamsters president, and the person who may be the next president of the United States wants to meet with you. Mm-hmm. You know, it's hard not to take that meeting. Right. It's Trump- hard not to take that meeting. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I'm I not sure if I would. Right. I can't say that. But I understand that it is, it is complicated um, because arguably, I mean, you know, he, he, O'Brien could arguably say, well, me having this meeting with him could advance the interest of our members, right? If we have a more favorable person in the White House, uh, you know, presuming the meeting helps the relationship, right? Which who knows? Who knows if it even does anything whatsoever? It could right. just be an inconsequential blip on their calendars, um, you know, with a couple photo ops that may not turn into anything. So I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm I'm curious about all the other reactions, though. Yeah. Uh, Trump would sooner call the National Guard than allow a strike at UPS. Trump wants part time poverty for Teamsters. Wake the fuck up the threat of an ascendant far right is something we need to get serious about as a labor movement there's no strategic maverick move here trump's politics are anathema to a fighting labor movement the teamsters lent credence to the presidential campaign of a union busting fascist curious millionaire at the most crude level of bread and butter union politics a vote for trump is a vote for the boss terror by ceo and see i don't necessarily disagree with any of that yeah Um, i still think it is complicated on on whether or not you take that meeting right Uh, and i do think i think the meeting is different than uh thumbs up photo with donald trump Uh, that's yeah that's fair enough because i mean i think that um that does seem to cross a line i mean i think into giving favorable coverage basically to someone who is clearly our enemy yeah uh and now i recognize that a lot of rank and file teamsters are fans of trump yeah. And I, I don't want to say it's a majority by any means, but there are they're out there and there are others who are kind of on the fence about him, maybe or disengaged from it. But uh, so, I, you know, yeah. but I do think it, it is something we have to be concerned about in terms of the far right and the fact that they did try to overthrow the government and they're not going to stop. Right. They're not going to stop doing what they do and, and trying to seize more and more power uh, in their pursuit of greed in their pursuit of hatred and bigotry. Uh, and our labor movement does need to be cognizant of that and needs to be doing something about it and, and actually reacting to it. Uh, so I get I get yeah. that this, you know, when you put it that way, it does look pretty bad. Yeah. One more, uh, uh, one more and then uh, comment, and then I have... Um... You know, historical reference, uh, the, this this comment on Twitter said, shows naivety and thirst for personal power over member strength when a union officer connives, connives with Trump's, Trump or his representatives. Recall AFT president uh, Weingarten thought she was slick uh, chatting it up with Steve Bannon. I and that actually that. that actually remind uh, that reminded me of Patco. Uh, you know, people think of Reagan and Patco and how that was terrible for the labor movement and how Reagan really, you know, fucked them over and all of this kind of stuff. People don't remember that Patco endorsed Reagan. Right. Uh, and that didn't help him. Right. So, you know, that's very true. Yeah. And so that's the thing. Like if you run the cost benefit analysis, I'm not sure you really gain anything by yeah. even playing these games with him, with Trump. I'm not sure that you really gain anything. I mean, maybe maybe it helps you have some better relationship, but, I mean, do we really think for any moment that, like, he's going to change his right. his approach? No, of course not. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't see where you really get much out of it. It's, yeah. it, I, I, I will still, I still am convinced that it's, it is hard if you are in the president, if you're in O'Brien's shoes, 
uh, and you have an offer on the table to meet with who could be the next president of the United States, that is a hard meeting to turn down, but I'm not sure that you're gaining anything by it. Yeah. Uh, and if you are going to engage, I think you have to engage on your own terms. And, right. uh, you know, maybe yeah, that... Going to Mar- Mar-a-Lago is another kind of weird thing to it as well. But... Oh, okay. See, so I didn't realize that. And yeah, and yeah. like, so I, I mean, you know, I would have loved if maybe the statement from the Teamsters also said something about January 6th, for example, right. or, you know. Um, so, uh, you know, O'Brien went on Neil Cavuto on Fox Business, and, and it is yet another thing about, you know, O'Brien, uh, you know, and his kind of flirtations with, with the right wing. He goes on Neil Cavuto, like, all the time. I have seen him on Neil Cavuto, uh, like, three or four times in the past two or three months. Um, but anyway, so he went on uh, And, and Neil you know, Cavuto. listen, I... I, I do want to just say I don't necessarily think that suspect in itself because like we air on a right wing radio station. Right. We engage with right wing media. Bernie goes on Fox News all the time. Uh, you know, whatever your thoughts about Bernie, it doesn't make him like a secret conservative because he does that. Um, so, yeah, I guess it's one of those things that like the context matters, right. I suppose. So here is his uh, here's his reaction to some of the uproar about his meeting with Trump, and then we have a caller on the line. I think I know who this is. I think it's a Teamster, and and probably calling in to to comment on this. So I'm interested in hearing yeah. what they have to say. So let's let's hear what what Sean O'Brien had to say on Neil Cavuto. So if, uh, you met with Donald Trump. How did that go? It went well. I mean, it was a uh, a meeting that, you know, we requested all the candidates to come to Washington, D.C. to meet with us. Unfortunately, his schedule uh, couldn't um, allow for that to happen. So we had just an initial meeting of where we stand on behalf of our members. But we said, you know, we want him to come uh, to Washington, D.C. and meet with our rank and file roundtable like we've done with the other candidates. And uh, he's agreed to do that. All right. So what about Joe Biden? You've been at, I believe, events with him, but not in 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 a political Political role per se, or maybe you can update me. Yeah, so we, we've reached out to the Biden administration, um, and they've yet to give us a date. Um, we're optimistic that we will get a date. Um, look, this has caused a lot of chaos. Uh, uh, this meeting, but you know, look, we have a job to do on behalf of 1.3 million members, and we our job is to make sure that we make the best choices, and we can't make choices without doing interviews and yeah. um, finding out exactly where people stand on labor issues. Now, um, you're, you're free not to share what you and the former president had to talk about but but uh, was it friendly yeah, I mean, it was very friendly, very cordial. Uh, and I can tell you what we talked about. I told him it was important to us. I said, we're not going to support any candidate uh, that, you know, wants to push for national right to work. Um, you know, we need some laws changed as it relates to bankruptcy uh, reform. We need some changes in LRB to make, you know, organizing that much easier for people that choose unions. So um, we had a frank conversation, uh, very professional, um, just like we've had with every other candidate. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tvlr.fm slash donate. So there you go. Interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there you go. So like I said, we got a, uh, a caller on the line and then we'll, we'll take this call and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, calling from a 714 area code. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Buenos dias and feliz año nuevo to everybody. It's Jose Francisco Negrete at a local 952 and uh, proud Teamster Mobilize. With Jose, welcome. To... Yeah, long long time no hear from. <laughs> yeah, welcome <laughs> welcome to 2024 Valley Labor Report. There you go. Gracias, gracias, gracias. With, re, with regard to Trump, I wasn't going to call it. I was listening to the show. But, I mean, this Donald Trump thing, I mean... There's a lot of teamsters that are Donald uh, that are team, Trump teamsters. There's a lot. Right. I work with a lot of them. You know what I mean? And some of them are good people. They're 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 not fascist. They're not racist. You know, their argument about Trump is with the whole uh, not argument, but their whole agreement with Trump is how the economy was better under Trump mm-hmm. than it what than it is with Biden. So that part I understand. But as a Mexican American. When he announced his presidency in 2016, coming down the elevator in his little golden palace out there in the Trump Tower, and the first thing that he he starts, you know, uh, bashing 
our our Mexican Americans called called us drug dealers, called us gangsters, called us rapists, and I guess according to him, some of us, some of them are good people. Right. Some of them are good people. Here's a person that wants to divide the working class between race. Right. Look what he called the January 16th people. He called them hostages. Mm. What did he call the people protesting for George for uh, George Floyd? Called them thugs, Antifa, communists. You know. And I'm a proud communist. And this guy for for Sean O'Brien to meet with with this fascist, this person that has no respect for the working class, a person that doesn't understand the struggle of the working class, just pays lip service like another one in office right now who claims to be the most pro-labor president ever. If they have, there will, they will have this round, this uh, rank and file uh, round table committee meeting. And those rank and file will probably be appointed or hand selected. Mm. I hope some of them ask, Donald Trump, why did he gut an LLRB? Why yeah. did he support a national right to work legislation? Why is he always critical of immigrants? Mm. Those are things. Why is it when he had his presidential economic committee, why was it just a bunch of CEOs and no, and no union leadership in there, in those committees? So you want to meet with, with, with this fascist? Right. Come on now, man. I understand that you that you you know you have to entertain the thought, but at some point you have to stand on principle. And we say, no, I cannot meet with with a man that has harmed the labor union and the labor movement, and a, an individual that only seeks and to de- that seeks to divide the working class between color. You do not. You have to. You have to take a principal stand at some point. You can't say, "Oh, he's going to be the presidential candidate." We all know he probably will be, but th- but you need to take a principal stand and say, "No, I cannot meet with mm-hmm. them." You know, you, where's the principal in that? Where's where's his principles? This is why I don't think Sean O'Brien is a principal leader. You do not take, you do not take those kind of meetings. You know, and where where is he? Where is he on? On on uh, on Gaza, on Palestine, Palestinian mm. trade unions call for international solidarity. Right. Didn't Sean Fain, you know, lay down his marker? Where's Sean O'Brien at? Yet you want to meet with the fascist? What's more important? Come on now, man. He's he's not principled. He's not principled. He shouldn't be leading this union. I didn't vote for him. He's our president. It is what it is. You know what I mean? I, I, he's, he's in office there for five years, and maybe for maybe longer. I hope not, but once once you get in there, it's hard to get out. Mm. But you need to take a principal stand. He did not take a principal stand. He takes a photo op with with Trump, yet you you stay you stay silent on on Palestinian trade unions calling for international solidarity. Mm. You know you're not this this. To me, I just I, I cannot take what happened lightly. It's 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 just a smack in the face, especially with some of us out here that are Mexican American that are first generation immigrants, that their parents came here with not knowing the the damn language, <laughs> and trying to make a a better living for themselves and for their children. Mm. You know, and yeah. didn't Trump just say that he wants to go after uh? First generation immigrants too, and and do something with their citizenship. I mean, he had, he, he he can't do it. I, some of we were born here, you know. But this is this is a man that not even a man. This is a a, a a an individual that just seeks to destroy the 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 working class. Seeks to destroy trade unions. And for and for my president, general president, to meet with him, it's a smack to it's a smack in the face to all of us, you know. And don't tell me he's a reformer, because if you're a reformer, you take a principal stand and say, no, I cannot meet with him. I understand there's a lot of teamsters that are Trumpers. I understand that, but out of sheer principle, we I cannot meet with him. 
You you, you just you just do not. Mm. All right. Well, Jose, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, Joe. Yeah. Appreciate you sharing your perspective, and uh, yeah, definitely respect how you feel about that. And, yeah. and uh, I'm curious how yeah. other Teamsters feel as well. And and I think that'll be interesting to see, um, you know, what the conversations are among members about this, and and how members feel. Yeah. Have a happy New Year, and uh, see you here in the, here in the next week, Jose. Appreciate it. Thank you. Joe in the chat in on Facebook said, uh, "Chickens uh, should meet with Colonel Sanders, but he's still going to cut your head off." <laughs> so yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the other thing is like leverage. You know, do you do you are you getting anything um, out of it? Uh, for example, you know, UAW's approach with the Biden endorsement, I feel like, has been uh, pretty strategic in terms mm. of, hey. We recognize you have something we want, but we're not just going to give it to you right. like so many others do, unfortunately. <clears throat> and so um, I don't know, you know, if, if if they had said, well, yeah, maybe we'll meet with you, but what are you going to do for us? Mm. You know, and if there had been some concession, some extraction of some kind that you could point to, uh, I think that would make it different. If yeah. you know easier or maybe easier to swallow, if you could say, right. "Yeah, sucks to have to meet with him, but we did win A, B, and C." Um, as far as I can tell, there's nothing like that. So I understand, um, you know, I understand Jose's concerns, and I imagine that's uh, felt A lot by of others. Feel him. Yeah, Rick Smith. Um, actually, he's got Rick Smith um, uh, radio show out of Pennsylvania. Um, he uh, he was very. Um, very animated um about about this uh upset at sean o'brien uh and rick smith is is is, you know generally a pretty ecumenical kind of uh uh kind of labor guy um uh but he was uh very very harsh in his uh in his critique uh what in god's name were you thinking rick unloads on teamsters president sean o'brien for kissing trump's ring and posing for a hostage picture at mar-a-lago on the eve of the january 6th anniversary uh that was from his twitter account so yeah pretty um yeah he was pretty upset so, yeah yeah i i understand the open invite invitation for the round tables for every candidate i think that's reasonable um but yeah i do understand the concerns about meeting with them and and the way in which it was done and all that yeah. um i think it does speak to though a, a broader a broader problem we have as labor which is you know how are we going to even relate to these elections in 2024 mm. um and what i expect is you know well we've already seen a lot of endorsements for biden without any real concessions without any real like they're giving endorsements away, but getting nothing in return, right? Right. Um, you know, folks can point to Biden's record and say it's objectively better for labor and for working people more broadly, and that's all true. Um, but you know, that doesn't absolve the rest of the record. Yeah, uh, especially the rest not of the concerns. With this, yeah, especially not with the the Palestine issue. No, absolutely not. Right, and so um, yeah, it's. <laughs> It's going to be complicated, and it's going to be uh, one thing I, I would like to see is that our unions don't just dump a bunch of money behind mm. Joe Biden and establishment Democrats. Um, unions are our PACs, I, I should specify, but um, I just don't know that you're, what you're getting for that. Um, there, there are plenty of ways you could use your resources, um, yeah. and I, I would just encourage folks to be strategic about it. Um, but we do have to be prepared as a movement to deal with further, um, you know, election interference, further, uh, you know, government overthrow uh, attempts. And, and so that's something we have to deal with. I know uh, David Von, Van Dusen uh, up in Vermont was having some issues with the national AFL-CIO because he mm. was really taking some leadership there from a state federation standpoint. Um you know, trying trying to be prepared, basically, for what what do you do when this right wing maniac tries to overthrow the government? Right. It's a real question, yep. and you know, our labor movement um, does represent 
Over 10% of the workforce has millions of members across the country. Um, and so we should have a plan. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. 